It's Maxine here from Northumberland Zoo uh, bringing you another Zoo News update. We've had a very busy uh, couple of weeks here. Um, quite a few of our projects that we've been working on have been cracking on really well. Um, so the new meerkat house which you can see behind me, the roof is very reflective so you can't really see it against the sky. Good. Good, good. Doing that on purpose, watching us carry it a very large piece of wall. Built. I'll just take you inside. Um, so it's quite a nice space. I don't know how much you can see with light, but. Um, so we're just putting the walls up inside now. Um, there's going to be two viewing windows uh, going on either side here. So you've got like a, a double view um, into their area. So it's all going to be themed with like termite mounds. And, and then at the back there, there's going to be the, the porcupine cave. Um, and then the meerkats will have access to their outdoor paddock through the old, old viewing window there, which would be really cool. Um, so yeah, this will be done by the time we open. And obviously this last week we got news of when we can reopen and it's going to be the 12th of April. A little bit disappointing that we weren't in the first stage of reopening and this is obviously goes for all zoos in the UK. Um, you know, why couldn't we open alongside gyms and places like that when we're primarily an outdoor attraction? But uh, it is what it is, it, it's, it's frustrating because from the time that they made that announcement at the end of February all the way through to the 12th, uh, we've lost out on one of our busiest times of the year, including the Easter holidays. So um, Easter holidays for us is one of the bumper parts of the year. Um, you know, it's two weeks of, of pretty much being fully booked. So to miss out on that again for the second year in a row, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth, but it gives us a little bit extra time to to get things sorted out and make sure we've got a few more things tied up before we reopen. Um, it just doesn't make doesn't make the money uh, side of things any easier. So um, we'll start theming this out hopefully in the next week or two, um, and then hopefully we'll be uh, ready to to let the animals in, which will be cool. Um, the other thing that we have just started working on is organizing the crayfish building. So I'll take you in there and I'll show you that. As you can see, we've got all of the racks lined up against the wall there, um, ready in place. And then all of our tanks are laid out on the floor here because they need a really, really good clean before we start using them. Um, we've got crayfish lined up from the Wild Place project, which is the sister zoo to Bristol Zoo. Um, so when we're ready, we can start bringing the crayfish in. Um, so the plan is, is to is to just test out our equipment and test out our facility for you know a good few months and make sure that we can maintain the conditions appropriate for keeping the crayfish there's no point in filling all the units and learning that actually our water is not very good or something's wrong um, and, and potentially losing animals so we're starting off with a very very small group um, which we can kind of split off into a few different areas and that way we can ensure that we perfect the husbandry before we start taking it large scale so we got this really nice on-show display tank um, which was funded by the Environment Agency because they're obviously, uh, they're our partners in this project. So we're working with the Environment Agency to establish this kind of, uh, this group of, of crayfish because in the future, if we ever need to repopulate an area, then 
this will be the population that will do it. So they bought this lovely tank for us, which is really cool. Um, and that'll be propped up to that window properly, so you'll be able to see it um, as a visitor. So these will be the crayfish that you'll be able to see up close, and obviously all of the other crayfish will be back against this wall and kind of, you know, kept away from the people. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of work to be done in here. But it's looking good, and uh, it looks very professional. And yeah, so this is just part of the native species building, obviously. Um, we've had the beekeepers down, and uh, they're designing an onshore hive for us, which is really cool. So they're gonna do an onshore hive inside this building that people can get up close to, but then they're also gonna put a real, like, not a real one, but another hive, which is just a normal beehive, outside as well. And that's going to have all kinds of monitoring equipment on it so that we can do research on them and, and, and look at the quantity of honey produced compared to the temperature and the wind speed and all that kind of stuff. So that'll be a really interesting research project for us as well. Um, and the harvest mice were cracking on with that one as well. So that's our native species bit. The next area that we've worked quite a bit on and, and we're almost pretty much there is the birds of prey area. Um, all the aviaries are looking really, really smart. I'll take you down and show you. It's gone on a little bit longer than what we were kind of intending, but it's, it's because it's a much bigger project than what we were intending. So I'll, uh, I'll take you down and, and show you, but hopefully the birds will be moving within the next couple of weeks. Then the birds will be happy and then we can start the next development. It's just never ending here. So here we are coming down to the new entrance of our bird of prey bit. It's a bit of a mess, apologies, but this will be nice and tidy by the time you guys get here. Um, so check these out, don't they look really smart? So what we've taken into consideration with building these new aviaries is the fact that all the birds have got a view so they can look out at stuff. They've obviously got really, really good eyesight, so they're gonna be able to spot things in the woods over there and keep an eye on the Arctic foxes and that. Um, they've also got open roofs, which means that they'll be exposed to the elements. So that means that if it rains, they can have a bath. You know, if it snows, they'll experience that. And obviously that means they can get the sun's rays and get vitamin D as well. Um, so yeah, they're, they sit up a little bit higher as well because the birds of prey we found prefer sitting up higher than us keepers and visitors. They feel a lot more confident and a lot more comfortable. Whereas if they're sitting at eye level with people, they get really uh, skitzy uh, when you go into their aviary. So if they can sit up a height, that's a lot better for them. So um, in here, we've got the barn owls going in here, tawny owls going in there. Our little American kestrels going in this one here. And then if we look down the hill, you can see all the rest of the aviaries. Well, this is the backs of them. This is gonna be one of our snowy owls going in here, which is quite a nice space. Now the snowy owls are a little bit different to the other owls because they are floor dwelling owls. So they like to sit on the floor. So you can view this one from around the side, but also from above, but because the snowy owls like sitting on the ground, it's not so, it's not so bad for them. Um, and then the guys are just finishing off the two hawk aviaries that are just around the corner. So it looks very different down here compared to what it did. Yeah, no, it's looking really good. Really, really smart. It's never ending. We don't, we don't mess about here. And, and what's really cool is obviously we do everything in house. So it keeps our costs down, but we also get all of our wood from the local sawmill. Again, keeps our costs down and it supports the local business. So we're a pretty skilled team to just crack on with these things. There's the meerkat house there from this side. So yeah, it's been a good few weeks. So obviously the countdown begins for the reopening on the 12th of April. Um, we'll be releasing tickets soon so you can start pre-booking. Um, and yeah, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel and like this video. Um, it would be much appreciated because that helps keep, continue to support us. But until then, we'll see you soon. Bye.